Hey, Kirk. Hey, Church. Good morning. Welcome. So good that you're here at the live stream of C3 The Hague. And um, maybe you're watching from a watch party. So cool. And maybe you're watching at home alone. Um, uh, welcome. So great that you're here. And uh, know that you're invited for a watch party next week. You can register on the online to, to, to do church with some other people together. And um, But amazing that you're here. Hey, my name is Michiel and I am involved with the Kids um, Church and uh, I want to tell you a little story about when I, uh, last week when I was preparing the um, Kids Church lessons and this particular lesson was about David. David just be uh, became a king, the king of Israel and the first thing David did was to bring the ark to Jerusalem and the ark is the presence of God and Jerusalem was the most important place in the country, right? So David wanted to have the presence of God at the most important place uh, in his country. And um, we uh, read that, that David was, when the ark came to Jerusalem, David was dancing in front of the ark. And then the, the, the kids learn that David was dancing because he was, first of all, he was happy, but second, because he was showing God how much he loved him and that that's called worship right and and that worship is there to please God but also that um, it makes you feel uh, it makes you, it fills you with joy and strength and um, hey this is what the kids learn but this is also applicable for us and we're going to um, have a moment of worship now so I want to invite you to worship like David and hey dancing is allowed but feel free to to do it your own way but let's worship God together and let's sing this song I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemy. I raise a hallelujah and it's louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah. My 
church, let's worship the King who secured us fighting from victory and not for victory because He's already won. We worship Him. I've tried so hard to see it. Took me so long to believe it. That you took someone like me. To carry your victory Perfection could never earn it You give what we don't deserve And you take the broken things And raise them to glory God, you are my champion Giants fall when you stand undefeated. Every battle you've won. And I am who you say I am. You crown me with confidence. I am seated in the heavenly place undefeated. With the one who has conquered it all. Now I can finally see it You're teaching me how to receive it So let all the striving cease This is my victory You are my champion Giants fall and you stand on the My champion, you are my champion. The giants fall when you stand undefeated. Cause every battle you've won, and I am who you say I am. Cause you crown me with confidence. I am seated. Place undefeated with the one who has conquered it all. Oh, no, he was conquered it all. You've conquered it all. What it all for I? When I lift my voice and shout every wall comes crashing down i have the authority jesus has given me when i open up my mouth miracles start breaking out i have the authority You crown me with confidence, I am 
good it is to worship God, right? Hey, let's stay in this uh, sense of the, um, God's presence as we go into uh, prayer. Hey, um, God is here. How good. Hey, and uh, I don't know what, what you're going through, right? Maybe you have some need, and uh, maybe you don't have a big need in your life and things are going well, but I believe that God has something for you today. And even though if things will, are going perfect, there's always... There's always an area where God can add something right now, right? And uh, maybe there are some, some real needs. You have um, feelings of loneliness or maybe you need a job. You have financial issues or housing or whatever it is. Know that God wants to provide for you and God knows, knows you and he wants to help you. And as we go into prayer right now, I, pray, if I, I ask you to, to have the need that you have or to have one specific area in your life where God can add something right now, that you would take that and bring it to God and open your heart as we will pray right now. Please pray with me. Yes, Father God, Lord Jesus, thank you for who you are. Lord, it's so good to be in your presence. We're so thankful to be children of you. And just like we sang in the song, we have the authority because of Jesus. What we celebrated with Easter, Lord. We are now children of you, children of the Most High God. And Lord, you know everything. You know us through and through. And Father, if we have a need, a need in financial uh, areas or, or a job or housing or maybe just our feelings or our mental state, Lord, we pray that you will come and that you will meet our need just like you there are numerous um, examples in the bible where you did miracles lord you can do a miracle right now too and we pray for miracles right now and father we thank you we thank you for all the good things in our life and lord we pray that even though we feel that maybe everything's going well lord we pray that you will have something for us lord we are here for you, to meet you. And uh, we open our hearts for what you want to do today. And we love you. You're an amazing God. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, church. Hey, so good that you're here. So good to be worshiping God together, a meeting in the house of God. And we want to apologize for some technical issues before the service started. But let's uh, raise our hands for the, or sorry, let's, let's give it up for the media team who just before, um, with the minutes to spare, uh, solved the issue. And that's amazing. There are a lot of people here trying to, um, to create this for you to, at home to, 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 um, to join to join in the house of God, right? And we are so happy that you're here. Amazing. Hey, and uh, we want to give you, uh, we want to take a moment of uh, giving, a moment of generosity. And um, for that, I have brought a scripture with me. And um, um, that scripture is from th uh, 2 Corinthians 9, verse, sorry, 9, verse 10. Some technical issues here as well. <laughs> um, Yes, there we are. So 2 Corinthians 9 verse 10, which says, For God is the one who provides seed for the farmer and then bread to eat. In the same way, he will provide and increase your resources and then produce a great harvest of generosity in you. And 
I'm a biology teacher, right? So I love nature and I love to, to, uh, to dive into nature, to see the, the, the creation of God and how beautiful everything is made. And I love that the Bible uses the, the example of a seed here because plants look a bit boring, okay? That's what I tell my kids too. Plants look a little bit boring, but actually they are very interesting because a little seed has the capacity to grow a huge tree. And that tree has the capacity to make its own food. It's the only organism in the world, plants, right, that can make its own food. This is the basis of all food and energy in the world. So we rely on that too. Hey, and um, it needs sunlight, right? It's called photosynthesis. Maybe you got some memory of your high school where, uh, where you've uh, taught photosynthesis that is making food with the help of sunlight. And um, a seed is put in the ground, right? Where there's no sunlight. And um, there's, um, there's no uh, possibility to make its own food if it cannot get the sunlight, right? So it's genius that a seed has a little bit of food, just enough food to grow, for the seedling to grow towards the... Uh, towards the surface and when it finally meets the surface and can get its own sunlight then um, it can make its own food right so um, it has a little kickstart just to grow just a little bit for it um, to become to a place where it can make its own food hey and um, when you give today it is a little seed what we do in church is planting little seeds and those little seeds have just a little bit of food, just enough food for a kickstart. And um, I've seen so many young guys and uh, there are so many people in church that come in church that don't have work, don't have a future plan, that don't have a good self-esteem, that when they are in church, there's a seed planted. And that little seed, that little bit of food is just enough for them to get a kickstart into a momentum. And that momentum helps them to become people who can, can look after themselves, who can get a job, who meet Jesus and find the love that Jesus has for them and helps them to, to love themselves, to create a future plan. And... Um, they just need a little kickstart, right? A little bit of food to get to a place where they can look after themselves and create things for themselves. And when you give, know that that is the possible, that that is the, uh, it is possible that with this little bit of seed that you're giving right now, that these huge things are possible. These big trees can grow out of that little seed that you're giving right now. So we want to thank you for your giving. We want to thank you for your generosity and know that God's kingdom is being built and that amazing things are happening with your gift today. Hey, let's pray for the gift. So please get your um, um, get your what you're giving in your hand or take it in your in your thoughts and let's bring it to God, right? Please pray with me. Father God, Lord Jesus, thank you that we have the opportunity to be generous right now. Thank you that you have given us, you have given us so many things and that we can give it to other people. And Lord, we pray that what we give, that you will multiply it, that you will use it in your kingdom to build your kingdom, to build the people in your kingdom, to give people a kickstart in meeting you, in um, uh, creating a future and uh, whatever they need in their lives. Lord, thank you that you are a loving God and that you are a providing God. And we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, church, so good. Um, before, we are going to listen to Lucas because we start a new series today. And um, it's, I'm very enthusiastic about these series. But before we do that, I want to give you a little heads up for a few things. Um, Next week, or no, sorry, coming Wednesday, 14th of April, we have a Christian Essentials meeting, which um, 
talks about the, the basics of faith, right? So what is the basis on which uh, our faith is built? Um, so um, information, but also a possibility to, get, to ask questions. And uh, um, if you know someone who can use this, please invite them. Everybody's welcome. And we love to see you there. And then a week later, on the 21st of April, we have a build night where we get it together with the church to pray. And this is an amazing time to pray yourself to, uh, for prophecy, but also to, to receive prayer, right? And who does not need that? That's uh, uh, prayer is so powerful. So we, we love for you to join as well, to gather together as the church to pray. Hey, and then our new series we are going to start today is called Testing God. And um, we want to give you some useful information about how to uh, share your faith, how to talk about your faith with other people. And um, this is something we're, we're going to talk about the coming weeks, today in the coming weeks. But also we, want, we have some tools for you to help you to start that conversation with someone else. And um, two concrete things is, first of all, the, the, uh, the, the videos of the message, so only the message, will be uploaded in YouTube, which you can... Um, watch yourself of course but also you can share that with other people right you can share the link um, but also in the church app we will give some talking points um, and you can use that to have a good conversation with someone about this so you can invite someone watch the movie together and then after that have a good conversation about about this movie and about what is talked about and a good conversation about your faith right and we give you some talking points that will help you to have a, uh, a sort of a guide through the through the um, uh, conversation that will help you to talk about your faith and to share your faith and we love to for you to pray and think about what you can do with this to with, with these tools and uh, to share your faith to build the kingdom of God and uh, I'm so excited and, uh, but before I'm going to, before Lucas is going to share his message, we will just sing one um, one chorus again for from from the uh, from the song. So please join in singing, and then we will listen to Lucas. Yeah, let's sing that chorus again. You are my champion. You are my champion. Giants fall when you stand undefeated Every battle you've won And I am who you say I am You crown me with confidence I am seated In the heavenly place undefeated By the power of your Well, super uh, good, uh, great to be here. And uh, so my name is, uh, is Lucas, in case we haven't met. Everybody that I, ha that I have met at watch parties and everything, just want to say hello. Um, we are looking forward to, uh, to doing this series together. And uh, again, as Michiel mentioned, um, there's a couple of things we want to achieve. So um, we're going to uh, indeed publish these sermons or talks separately. Uh, as a resource and maybe this will help you in months to go when you have a conversation about these topics um, maybe this will help you this week but uh, we just want to make this resource available and um, and we're looking forward to this so I want to take a moment to pray um, and then we're going to dig into the first subject of testing God some of this content we've done two years ago and we had a real um, moment where we had a real search of people from all kinds of backgrounds into our church um, in 2018 when we started our English service. And it was just um, a really great moment. And uh, the content won't be exactly the same. Uh, it will be revisited and, um, and so, but it really spoke to me. And I think now, um, right after Easter, more than ever, I think um, uh, this, the content will be relevant. And so I wanna pray together with you for opportunities that you have to share your faith 
to share the gospel this week and to make your conversation centered around the cross. And as we do that, let's pray for the Holy Spirit to work together with us and um, to work with us to confirm the word of God. So why don't we just all pray for somebody that we know who needs God, somebody that we know who has a need that can only be filled by God. Maybe in your own life you are searching. Well, we want to pray for you right now. So Father, we, we thank you. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. We pray that you will lead us together today in truth. We pray that as we experience your presence today, that we will experience a relationship with you, that we will get to know Jesus better um, through our conversation today and through your presence. Lord, we invite you. We thank you for your presence. We worship you and we thank you. Come on, everybody. Why don't we just thank God? We thank you for your grace. We thank you that the cross is still empty. We thank you that Jesus still rose from the dead. We thank you for life and truth. We thank you for truth and grace. We thank you for the gospel. As your word says, we are not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of salvation. We thank you for it, for, for eternity. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. So thank you, band. Thank you, everybody. Um, and, um, and so today, the, the title of this message uh, that I want to share with you um, is How Can You Claim to Know Truth? Uh, the title of this message is How Can You Claim to Know Truth? As uh, maybe as, um, uh, as Christianity or any faith, how can we claim truth? Um, and I, we live in a society where I feel that that question is very relevant. And so I want to talk to you from, uh, I want to start with a scripture, uh, 2 Corinthians 2, verse 14. A couple of sentences where Paul says this. Um, he, he writes, as every Bible scripture, he writes this in a particular context. Uh, he was referring to a situation. And in this situation, he says, But thanks be to God, who always leads us as captives in Christ's triumphal procession a procession, um, and uses us to spread the aroma of the knowledge of him everywhere. For we, are God, for we are to God the pleasing aroma of Christ among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. perishing. To one we are an aroma that brings death, and to another an aroma that brings life. And who is equal to such, uh, to such a task? It's interesting because um, this scripture has an association attached to it. In this scripture, um, we, we see a reference to the, triumphal, uh, the, the triumphant en entry. Um, where, where the, 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 he calls it here the, the, the triumphal possession. Something is not happening. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah. Um, the triumphant uh, procession, the triumphant en entry that everybody in a Roman society would know. What is the triumphal entry? Well, when a general would win a war, he would come back to Rome, and he would have um, he would have a, a, a procession. Uh, um, what is another word for that, Nicola? A, a triumphant entry, an uh like a walk-in, a, a, a celebration where they would go uh, to a particular temple and uh, to celebrate the victory. Um, while they were doing this, all the temples would open their doors and uh, the, the scent of incense would, would be all over the whole, um, the whole ceremony. And during the procession, all kinds of incense would be burned. And so that would be a, like a strong smell of expensive um, um, perfume and expensive incense that everybody would smell. And so this smell would be, be an association that everybody would have with the, uh, with the procession itself. And so when Paul here speaks about the triumphant entry or the triumphant procession and about the, the flavor, um, uh, the aroma of, of Christ that brings death to some people and, and life to other people, um, he is he's talking about this one illustration, this picture that we wouldn't immediately go into um, uh, in our thinking. And, and it's interesting because in these processions, they would also bring their prisoners. And at the end of the procession, when they, come to, uh, when they would come to the temple, they would, uh, they would execute some of the prisoners 
as a signal, as a communication. This is what we do with the enemies of Rome. This is what we do with the enemies of the Roman Empire. And so to, to some people, this, this uh, scent, this flavor would have a positive a connotation, a connotation of victory, a connotation of, of um, conquering something. And to other people, this would have a negative connotation, a connotation of death and a connotation of defeat. And so um, when Paul writes this, um, he uses this as an illustration of the gospel. Um, uh, and he says that there are, um, that when it comes to the gospel, in the same way as with the triumphant entry, there are associations, um, there are positive associations and negative associations. Um, and, so, and so he says to some people, the same smell, think about this, the same scent to some, that's, for some people can have a positive association, to other people can have a negative association. And I don't know whether you've ever experienced this when you uh, speak about religion to people or when you speak about something that you are completely convinced about. And you're trying, to, um, you're trying to communicate something that is liberating to you. And other people can respond negatively. Uh, have we found this in the studio today? Uh, you, you're finding that you're, you're trying to say one thing, and you think it's good news, and the other person takes it as bad news. That can, that can lead to some bad uh, Christmas uh, dinners or, or Easter uh, breakfast. Or, uh, or, um, Easter breakfast, or it can lead to some, some strange conversations because we can have s different associations with the same uh, content. And Paul says that's, that's the same for the gospel. We can, we, we can have the same message with a different flavor. He says to some people, the message of the gospel, um, it gives them a, a flavor of joy, and to other people, it gives them a flavor of judgment. Now, I was thinking about this because a scent can influence our judgment. I don't know whether you've ever thought about this, but um, there are different smells that can, stay in a, that can stay in a space. If you are a parent, and some of you I know who are watching are, some of you are very young parents, the, the smell of a filled diaper can just fill, fill a car or fill a room, and it can linger, it can stay. Like the smell of poop, can I say that on YouTube? The, 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 smell, of, 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 the, the, the smell of human excrements is, is so disgusting and it sticks. Have you found that Ariana just sticks around when it's, when it's like a little bit of it in your, on your fingers? It just, it just stays, you know? It, it ruins the flavor of your coffee. So somebody's <laughs> drinking coffee right now. It just, it just messes everything up. You know, if, you, if you've ever bought a secondhand car, and the person you bought it from has smoked in that car. You know that, that there's, a fla there's a smell that, that just stays that you can't get it out of. Uh, you, you can't take it out. Um, or when you're in a romantic mood and you're shopping for perfume, you're trying to, you're trying to pick the perfect uh, scent for your, um, for your special friend um, or for yourself. You know, um, you, you're just getting, you can get lost in a sense because the, the smell stays in your nose. And so we have a little, um, we have a little tool for that, um, and that is coffee beans. Can somebody just state their faith in coffee beans today? I mean, um, and so when you take, like, not grind it, but when you take pure coffee beans, coffee has this, has this um, amazing um, quality of absorbing flavors. When you smell coffee... Oh, it's just beautiful, isn't it? I'm gonna do that again. Oh, it's just wonderful. It just it just takes it just takes the other the other smells out, and it just has this neutralizing effect. Um, and and I'm hoping that this series or maybe this message could have like like the effect of coffee. To s some people, this might have the opposite effect, and it's gonna put you to sleep. But to some people, it's going to maybe have this effect of coffee, where it's going to neutralize the associations that you have. Because let me just say this, every person has a set of associations when it comes to Christianity. You have associations that are, when it comes to Christianity based on your education, based on your um, 
uh, based on the way you were raised, based on uh, your society, uh, based on your experiences, which can be positive or negative. But you have a set of, of experiences, and they, and they create a certain smell, a certain association with the gospel for you. But let me ask you a question. Imagine, imagine this. Imagine if we could evaluate the truth claims of the gospel from a neutral position. Now, let me just say straight away that that is impossible to do. But just imagine if you could. If you could, if you could have a, a neutralizer that would neutralize all the associations that you have with the Bible or with Jesus or with Christianity... Imagine um, what could happen. Let me ask you, if you could do that, what is the worst thing that could happen? To some people, maybe the worst thing that could happen is you might become a Christian. And I, I can understand that because, again, you might have some associations with what it means to be a Christian. Um, but let me just ask you, if you could just look at the gospel, look at the Bible from a neutral perspective... Uh, the worst thing that actually could happen is that you would see the effects of what the Bible claims. What are the claims, the truth claims of the Bible? Um, without what Christians has, have done in the name of Jesus or what people have done in the name of God, without associations of history, what does the Bible say about the Bible? And maybe you would still come to the conclusion that Christianity is not for you. But at least you would come to that con conclusion from, from an, a neutral position, from a, from a factual position, because you're saying, I don't like what the Bible says about Jesus, or I don't like what, what Jesus says or what he did. But at least, so I would say the worst thing that could happen is we would become more informed about Christianity. And so I'm hoping in the coming uh, four sessions to share a couple of uh, to address a couple of questions and, and to share some facts. We are going to talk about how can a good God allow suffering. We are going to talk about how can a good God send people, how can a loving God send people to hell. Um, but today, um, I would like to start with two facts about believing, and I'm hoping that can, that can sort of have a neutralizing effect, and I'm praying it does. And so two facts I want to share with you in the coming 10 minutes. And one fact is, Jesus claims the truth. Jesus claims the truth. And, and I think it's important to mention that because many people would say, or some people would say, um, I believe that Jesus is a good person. I believe that he was a good person. I believe that he was a good teacher. I believe that he was a moral person. I believe that he was a clever person, a smart person, a helpful person. But I just have an issue believing that he's the son of God, that he is God, that he rose from the dead, that he died for my sins. I, I just cannot, I find that like a step too far for me. But I can believe that he was a good person. But I want to talk to you about what Jesus said about himself. And, and some of the things that he said are so radical and so, and, and, and so um, extreme that if he wasn't God, that it was impossible for him to be a good person. And I want to I wanna read you one of his quotes. Um, it's an interesting conversation he has with his disciples. John 14, verse 4, he says, Jesus says to his disciples, he says, And where I go you know, and the way you know. And then Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, and, and how can we know the way? Now, let me just take a moment to pause and say that I actually like Thomas. Um, the, uh, many, many people call Thomas Doubting Thomas because Thomas questioned a lot of things. Thomas wanted to have evidences for, uh, evidence for certain things. And uh, so some people call him disbelieving or unbelieving Thomas. But you know what? When Jesus said, where I go, you know, and the way you know, all of the disciples um, acted like they knew what Jesus was talking about. Peter was like, of course, Jesus, we know. What are you talking about? You know, like, like, uh, like he looked at John, and John said, yeah, you know, uh, I know, I know what he's talking about. James got it covered. But Thomas actually dared to voice the questions that he had. 
And let me just say that it's not necessarily a negative com a quality. I think it's a positive quality. I think um, the Bible challenges us, Jesus challenges us to ask questions, to question faith, to question Christianity, to look for facts and to look for information. And I love the fact that Thomas has the audacity to at least acknowledge that he doesn't understand. There's this guy in the Bible who has a sick family member and he comes to Jesus and then he says to Jesus, he says, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. And I think it is better to be honest with God about our doubts than to fake faith in the, in the hope that God will see through our doubts and in, in the hope that we can, we can play games with God. Let me just tell you, it is such a great thing to ask questions. And if you're watching today and you have questions, you know, good on you. And let's critically look at the Bible because we understand as a church that some of the claims that Jesus made were a little crazy and are a little bit out there. And that Jesus was a little bit eccentric and he was a little bit less politically correct than maybe we'd like to say. But at the same time, Jesus says some things. And so, the, so, so his explanation is this. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And that is a statement that has consequences. What that statement means, in fact, is that Jesus says, well, Jesus says he is, he is truth. He says he is the only way to God. He is the, he is the only way that we can come to him uh, or, to, or to his Father. And that's quite an exclusive statement, and it's pretty, it's pretty rough. But, at the, but he, also, he also claims to be the personification of truth. And if he was good, he couldn't possibly lie about this. If he was a good teacher, he couldn't, he couldn't teach things that, that were absolutely false. His disciples died believing that he is the truth, that he is the way, that he is the life, that he is the only way to God the Father. And if Jesus would, would lie about this or if he would be incorrect about this, he couldn't possibly be a good teacher. So this claim has the consequence that we cannot say Jesus is both good, both sane, and, and yet not God. He either has to be God or he has to be crazy. He either has to be God or he has to be a villain. He either has to be a god, or he has to be crazy and, and nuts. But he cannot, be, he cannot be good and only human at the same time. And so there's, there's many facts and many claims that the Bible makes, but I just, I just want to let you know that Jesus doesn't leave us a middle-of-the-road option. Jesus claims to be the only way to God. And let me just say this. Even though Jesus is the only way to God, there are many perspectives that we can have of Jesus. And there are, the Bible talks about the many faceted wisdom of God. And that there are definitely many ways that we can find God. I know about people who, who found Jesus um, in the Quran and, got, and, and, and found God through it. And so there are many ways to Jesus, but there's but, but Jesus is the only way the Bible claims to God, and that is what Christianity believes. Jesus is the truth, the way, and the life. We can come to, through him to God, and that is a fact that Christianity believes. Now, a second fact about faith in general that I want to make today um, that I sort of want to finish with is everyone makes claims based on unproven facts. Every single human being who believes um, something about the meaning of life has to make that claim based on, on some basis of unproven facts. There's this, there's this pop, there's a, uh, there's a, um, there's a statement or something that I think many atheists would, would, would probably believe. Um, and some specific atheists and writers write about this uh, when they say that they are only willing to believe what is empirically proven. We only want to believe something that, is, that, it, that has 
empirical evidence, but everything, um, but, but, but listen, we cannot, we cannot have a faith system, we cannot have a, conv a, a conviction system that is only based on evidence. There's many things that people believe, and I'm not, not only speaking about atheists right now, but there's many things that people believe that we don't have evidence for. Many people in our society would say they believe in themselves. Well, let me just say, we don't have empirical evidence for faith in yourself. Um, many people say that when a loved one has died, that that person is still with them. Yet we don't have empirical evidence, but many people seem to believe that. Um, many people seem to say that, seem to be convinced that God does not exist. But can I ask you, what is your empirical evidence that, uh, to claim that God does not exist? See, we all have to make a decision on what we believe. And there's no such thing as, as, a, a, as, a, as an objective scientific unbelief versus a subjective faith. When you start believing in God, it is not a jump from empirical uh, evidence to a subjective, um, subjective perception. Every single um, uh, bigger conclusion of the meaning of life has to be based on some sense of subjectivity because we all have to, we all have to work with an incomplete set of facts. There are some facts. There is some empirical evidence, but we, we cannot make our, our um, view on life airtight and, and, and purely, um, purely scientifically proven. And so everybody has to make some sense of an assumption. There's this uh, popular story when it comes to religion um, that, that is a story of the blind man and an elephant. Um, the blind man and an elephant. And the story is there's a couple of blind men and, and for some reason they encounter an elephant but they don't know what it is because they are blind. And, uh, and I would say like, it is, it is uh, evident that this story doesn't uh, take place in the Netherlands. It's a fictional story, by the way. But anyway, these blind men, they encounter an elephant. The first person um, uh, uh, hits a hard surface, you know, and uh, sorry, I don't mean to make jokes about blind people, that's inappropriate. Uh, he hits a hard surface, um, and then he feels around, he feels on, on the stomach, and he says, oh, this, this seems to be a wall of some sort of flat surface, um, um, you know, it's like, it's really big, and uh, it must be a wall. Uh, another person, another, the, another blind person touches the trunk of the, of the elephant, and he says, no, no, it's not a, it's not a wall, it's more like it's more like a tree trunk. It's like tall and it's round and it's, and it's, um, it's circular. Um, and I'm not going to go into the other blind people who might have touched the elephant on some inappropriate places. Like it gets a little bit dirty. But, uh, but you know, um, but so they, they, they have this, this pers each, each of these blind people have this perspective um, of the elephant. And then the, the moral of the story is, it's just as... Um, just as a, uh, one of the blind, uh, just as the blind man cannot make a conclusion of the whole elephant, in the same way, different religions cannot see the full picture, because the thinking goes: um, um, every religion has a small, contains a small piece of the bigger picture. Buddhism contains a small piece of the same truth. Christianity contains a small piece of the same truth. Islam contains a small piece of the same truth. And so all these religions together form the truth. But there is, there is a problem with this theory, and the problem is the following. How can somebody conclude that all different religions contain a small piece of the bigger picture unless you yourself claim that you can accurately and precisely see the complete picture. See, this, this claim in itself has this claim that, that all religions can only see a small piece of the, of the, of the, of the elephant, but now from a non-religious perspective, you can see the full truth. But see, that's a conflict in itself, because if that is your perception of truth, then your perception claims that you yourself can only see a small picture. So how can you claim to see the whole picture? See, uh, I don't believe that that, 
that, is, that statement is correct. And I don't believe, actually, that there is scientific evidence um, to support um, that story. And if this is your approach, I feel like it's understandable. Let me just say it's understandable that you feel this way. But I feel it's important for you to conclude that, that you need to put your own measuring stick in your own philosophy and conclude that, that you yourself then see a small piece of the picture. And therefore, you cannot make such a black and white blanket statement over all religions. I want to share this quote with you from Tim Keller. I mean, want to actually, um, if, you, if, you're, if, you would, um, if, if you would be willing to take the uh, testing God challenge, which means that you are going to watch all the videos that we are going to post in the coming four weeks. And if you're willing to do so, um, and at the, in the fourth video, give us the four keywords that we are sharing uh, in these videos. The keyword for this uh, uh, video is elephant. If you're going to share the four keywords in the, in the fourth video, um, then we are going to contact you and we would like to send you a book, uh, this book of Tim Keller. But this, uh, this uh, quote that I want to share with you, The Reason for God, um, uh, is, about, is an observation about um, uh, a stream. Uh, and Tim Keller calls it uh, atheism or strong uh, rationalism that's looking for empirical truth. And he says this, he says, how can you empirically prove that no one should believe something without empirical proof? Think about that for a moment. How can you empirically prove that no one should believe something without empirical proof? Then he goes on to say uh, that this way of thinking also assumes that it is possible to achieve the view from nowhere a position of almost complete object objectivity, but virtually all philosophers today agree that that is not, not possible or that is impossible. It is impossible um, because, again, we all have associations, we all have feelings, we all have a sense of culture and education. And so if we could, if we, if we could possibly neutralize our associations and look at the facts, I would like to ask you, do you have an objective view? Um, and are there any associations that you have with the gospel? And are those associations consistent with what the Bible actually says? If you never read the Bible, I would just, I would just really encourage you to read the four gospels. Read it for yourself and, and make your own conclusions. But I know that when you dive into it, when you seek God... The promise that the Bible makes is if you seek God, you will find him. And so uh, as we end this message, I want to take one moment to pray for every person watching. Uh, and then we're going to sing a song um, here in the service. And we're going to conclude this, this, uh, this Sunday. But Father, I thank you for your Holy Spirit. Um, we thank you that the Bible says that the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. And he will lead us into all truth. And so we pray for your Holy Spirit, um, as we think about these things, as we think about our associations, that you lead us into truth. I thank you that Jesus says that no one um, can know the Father except through Christ. And I pray that we will see Christ today. I pray that we will see more of Christ as we seek you. And I thank you for the promise as we seek you, we will find you. In the name of Jesus, amen. So, hey, church, we're going, to, um, we're, going, we're going to sing a song here. The band is going to sing a song, and uh, then Michiel will come back to you. If you like this video, if this is, is helpful, why don't just go ahead, give this video a like, subscribe to our channel, get involved in the app, find the notes in the app, the talking points, pray about them, see how you can uh, ask questions or weave them into conversations. Just have some conversations about truth this week. So many conversations we can have. This is the conversation that we need to have. We're praying for you. In the name of Jesus, amen. I'm going to sing in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder, you're going to hear my praises roar. So I'm gonna say
Okay, church. Wow, what a message, eh? And uh, what a what a worship band. I'm always very impressed by only three people and uh, um, giving such a good worship set. So I love that. And uh, the message, I love um, doing research, right? Asking questions and uh, answering the questions so that you have a conviction for yourself instead of talking to talking about someone else's conviction so i think that's really good and i realize that this message and these movies and these uh, subjects to talk about for discussions are not only for christians right it's also for someone who has um, questions about christianity or someone who has an opinion about christianity and who doesn't know that there are a lot of people who have opinions and love to get into a discussion and prove you wrong. Well, how good is it that you can use this to have some ammunition to go into that dis discussion and have a good conversation about uh, the Christian faith, right? And um, so um, we hope that you have uh, um, uh, all you need to get into that discussion. And uh, elephant, remember the word elephant, and the next uh, words will come next week. And uh, um, let's win the book. Hey, uh, we're going to close this, uh, this service and we, uh, we thank you for joining. It was so good that you were here. Uh, sign up for the, um, for the watch party so you can join the watch party next week. And um, that would be amazing to do church together and be a community. And uh, hey, we wish you an amazing week. We pray for you. Have a good week. See you next week. Have a good Sunday. Bye.